Let's do a bit more talking today. Morrigan. Let's start I await you. your command. That's good question. We are in camp, so tis as good a time as any. Why? Oh, I don't know. I don't. You don't like that. <laughs> Let's not do that. I await Other your questions. command. So, full of questions, are you? <laughs> yes. Have you ever been hunted by the Chantry? My mother has been hunted from time to time, yes, by Templar fools like Alistair, which should tell you how successful they generally were. Flemeth made a bit of a game of it, in fact. The Templars would come again, and she would look at me and smile and say that the fun was to begin once more. Fun? You found it fun? I found the game fun. I was too young to understand the truth behind what was happening. Flemeth would warn them once. It was a warning they inevitably failed to heed. And then the true game began. Often Flemeth would use me as bait, <laughs> a little girl to scream and run and lure the Templars deeper into the wilds and to their doom. Flemeth used you as bait? It was a game and I a young girl. If I didn't get to play, I would have been very upset. Thankfully, the wilds is a vast place. Once they found us, Flemeth would simply move us elsewhere and we would be lost within the forest once again. I did not understand the danger we faced until I was much older. I had never heard of apostates or maleficarum. Um, <laughs> you're a mate, you should know what an apostate is. Uh, do you still think that was fun? I think that my mother made it fun so that a child did not learn to fear. And I think that it was necessary. There are no trials for apostates, no prisons, no mercy. There are only absolutes, so only survival matters. If the wilds have taught me anything, tis this. First, you must survive. Do you disagree? No, no, I don't. <laughs> You're probably right. An interesting answer for a mage. Enough of this talk, let us return to the task at hand. Yeah, let's do that. Shayo, my best. Oh. Ah, I would expect Gollum's to be different. Different? Different than what? Different than a statue? Different than a log? Should I talk in a monotone? Yes, Master, I exist to serve the Master. I shall kill for the Master and only for the Master. Perhaps it expected me to have a booming voice. Recite limericks. <laughs> I can recite limericks, if it likes. <laughs> sure, go ahead. Are they dirty limericks? Mostly, they involve slaughtering pigeons in creative <laughs> and invasive manners. I have never met another golem. I have no idea what one might be like, or why I wouldn't be like them. Why? Has it met other golems? Did they not sound as I do? Uh, I have no idea what golems sound like. I don't know what other golems might be like, but I am already superior by virtue of my free will. This is a good thing. Mm -hmm. I agree. Being a golem would be handy. Imagine the benefits. No need to eat or sleep or perform other functions. Walk underwater, crush the heads of every opponent. The possibilities are limitless. Barring the occasional 30 years or so of paralysis, there's little to compare. Now stop talking so much. The wagging of its moist little tongue is distracting. Okay, sorry. Liliana. Did you always live in an alienage? Was it very terrible? What? Why, I'm a mage! I was raised in the circle tower. I'm so confused. Uh, yes, yeah, Circle Tower. I have never been to the Denerim alienage, but I hear that life is hard I was and not raised there is so much squalor. In Orlais, most Alvin servants live in the homes of their masters, often in great wealth and luxury. You mean slaves? Yes, but some humans are treated cruelly too. It is not just elves. A well-trained Alvin servant is highly valued in Orlais. They are nimble and dexterous, and many people find them pleasing to look at. 
Uh huh, like a prize winning animal. No, I did not mean it that way. <laughs> oh, my words were clumsily chosen. I know, I, I just did not like mean being to a I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I am sorry. Uh, I am elven, but more than that, I am a person. Of course, I am sorry if I implied otherwise. Thank you. Oh, Stan, you have given me a lot to think about. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, okay. Hey, uh, Grandma. Have you encountered many abominations apart from the ones in the Circle Tower? Well, there was Connor. Ah, yes, Connor, of course. Yeah. The first time I saw an abomination, my blood turned to ice. It was months before the nightmares stopped. It was the knowledge that I could easily become one of them that frightened me the most. Well, seeing the monster that you could be is unsettling, yes. One slip. All it takes is one slip, and everything you are is simply gone. Replaced by madness. And there is no turning back, or at least that's what they say. You have doubts? Of late, I have begun to wonder <laughs> if... The if there is any way an abomination can be cured, or if a mage could be so possessed and still retain their sanity, their humanity. Mm hmm. Stupid humanity. What about uh, elf vanity? I guess, I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> yes. It is madness and cruelty that define abominations. If those are lacking, if the mage remembers the person they truly are, then they are not an abomination. I never saw that. Thank you for showing me another way of looking at it. Hmm. You're welcome, When You're not an abomination. Don't worry about it. Hey! Here I am. Here you are! Oh, this should be good. Go ahead. Tell me a little bit about Antifa. Oh, you wish to know about Antiva, do you? The only way to truly appreciate it would be to go there. It is a warm place, not cold and harsh like this Ferelden. In Antiva it rains often, but the flowers are always in bloom. Or so the saying goes. Mm-hmm. And it has assassins. Every land has its assassins. Some That's are simply true. more open about their business than others. I hail from the glorious Antiva city, home to the royal palace. It is a glittering gem amidst the sand, my Antiva city. Do you come from some place comparable? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, no, so could all, you know. No? That is too bad. If you were, then surely you would spend as much time boasting about it as I do. Hmm, you know what is most odd? We speak of my homeland, and for all its wine, and its dark-haired beauties, and the lilo flutes of the minstrels, I miss the leather the most. The leather? Is that some kind of euphemism? <laughs> it may as well be, but not this once, no. I mean the smell. For years I lived in a tiny apartment near Antiva City's leather-making district, in a building where the crows stored their youngest recruits, packed in like crates. I grew accustomed to the stench, even though the humans complained of it constantly. To this day, the smell of fresh leather is what reminds me most of home, more than anything else. That sounds like you've been away from home forever. Oh, not so long, I know. It is my first time away from Antiva, however, and the thought of never returning makes me think of it constantly. Before I left, I was tempted to spend what little coin I possessed on leather boots I spotted in a store window. Finest Antivan leather. Perfect craftsmanship. Ah, but I was a fool to leave them. I thought, ah, Zevran, you can buy them when you return as a reward for a job well done. More the fool I, no? <laughs> Your home is still there, Zevran. True, and it's a comforting thought. One simply never knows what is to come next. How could I have suspected I would end up defeated by a beautiful Grey Warden? A woman who then spares my life. I could not. Mm-hmm. Now you're flattering me. I say you are beautiful because it is true. Should I not? No, please. I love compliments. And glad I am to hear it. Now, if it is all the same to you, I would prefer not to speak more of Antiva. It makes me wistful and hungry for a proper meal. Okay. You know, I've been thinking. 
Oh, what? Such a rare event is worth informing me for sure. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Funny, I'm sure. Just listen for a minute. Back when we left Goldana's, you told me I needed to look out for myself more than I do. I'm beginning to think you were right. I need to stop letting everyone else make my decisions for me. I need to take a stand and think about myself for a change. Or I'm never going to be happy. Okay. It's about time. Then from this point on, I'll be looking out for myself more. I should have done this a long time ago. I just wanted to thank you. Meeting you is the one bright spot out of everything that's happened. Aww. Thank you. That's very sweet. I feel the same way. Please love me. Let's go. We've got a lot left to do. Uh, yeah. Who's then? You, you still need a sword. Yes. I'm probably gonna forget about it again. Uh, what were you doing in that cage? Sitting, as you observed. No, I, you were standing. Cute. You decided at a time, I see. Your grasp of the obvious is remarkable. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Are you going to answer my question? I did. Parshera, was there anything else? Uh, uh, Speak then. Just talk to me, I don't know. <laughs> then I suggest we move on. Question. I am hardly surprised. Uh, why did you come to Ferelden? To answer a question. And what was the question? The Arishok asked what is the blight. By his curiosity, I am now here. Uh -huh. Don't you have to report back then? Yes. Okay, so what are you still doing here then? I cannot go home. Why not? It doesn't matter now. Can we move on? We keep the dark spawn waiting. Okay, let's go. As you wish. I guess not. Dog, fish, my favorite is puppy. You are a true warrior and worthy of respect. Why the dog? Can I crawl at you and have your respect? Puppy, remind me that we need a sword first then. That's important. <laughs> 